So we have seen k-means, and one of the main limitations of k-means, although you know it is, it is it is attractive in so many ways, it has its strengths. But then one of the main weaknesses of k-means is that you need to know k, right? K should be known a priori, right? Should be known a priori. And uh, exact knowledge of k, right? There could be several applications where uh, you know we don't have exact knowledge of k. We might have an estimate of k. We might roughly know as to you know probably k should be about this number, but then it could be the the eventual number of classes could be greater than that, or could be a little less than that, and so on. Okay. In order to handle this shortcoming of k means, the other algorithm, right? There is an extension of this, what is called isodata, isodata clustering. ISO data clustering. And what does ISO data stand for? It's, it stands for iterative. It stands for iterative self organizing data clustering. Self organizing data clustering. Okay. ISO data, I'll probably remove this, right? So ISO data is iterated self-organizing data. Okay, this is a clustering method again. So it kind of it's an extension of k-means. Okay, it's very similar to k-means. Right, in fact, it utilizes k-means along the way, but has this additional flexibility that k right need not be k can be k is allowed to change along the way as the right, iterations go on. Now you know it uh, it uh, it hinges on three main things. Right, it allows for merge, it allows for a discard, and it allows for split. Okay, I'll, I'll explain what kind of each of these things mean. So it actually means that it can allow two two kind of clusters to merge if <coughs> right if that means are too close. It allows a cluster to be dropped if it has too few samples in it. And then it also allows the clusters to be split. I mean, if it finds that the variance within within that see within that particular that cluster is uh, is way too high. So I'll write all the steps, okay, and then and then right, we'll kind of see what they mean. So very similar to k-means, very similar to k-means. Assume that you start with uh, right with some with some value for k. Okay, suppose we say that we're starting with uh, with uh, no k groups, so one, two, right up to k. But then, as I said, right, we are we are we we will be able to change k along the way. But initially, we have some estimate, right? We start with k. Now, what it does is the following, right? So once you have uh, okay, so once you have run through k, means so you, so you have these data samples x one, x two, all the way up to x n. Right, and uh, just as we did in k-means, we'll start with some random initial assignment of the pattern centers, right? Go through, uh, right? Go through, go through the, right? I mean, go through a clustering process, and then, right? Eventually, eventually end up, end up, right? Uh, with some, with some kind of groups here. Okay, but then what? What you need to do is. Right, even in the very first, very first, right iteration. Okay, as you as you kind of right, get onto a group. Okay, just as you would do in K-means. Right, the first iteration, what do you do? You start with some with some random centers, right, which which you simply pick from this data set randomly, and then and then uh, and then you start assigning x one, x two, right up to x n to let's say each of these data centers. Okay, and then and then after you have, after you have gotten these data centers, you you re and then you recompute the means. When you recompute the means, right? What you do is now you sort of you sort of say take a call, right? You take a call whether whether we should decrease k or increase k, or should we just stay with k? What is that? What is that kind of based on? So at this point, what it does is, so in isolator, it merges, it merges clusters i n i n j clusters i and j, let's say, right, so i is somewhere here, and probably j is somewhere there. If, if, it's a mod of m i minus m j. I mean, right, this if it's a scalar, it's less than some value tau one. Okay, this will be a hyperparameter. This is something that we need to fix. Okay, which is why 
ISO data is also not so not so elegant, but at the same time, you know, it gives you some flexibility. So the stubborn is something that we need to fix. If it is a vector, right, then we will have to see norm mi minus mj, right, norm square, we should say is less than some value tau 1. Okay, if it is a scalar, okay, uh, if it is a vector. So what this means is that, that these two groups, we kind of believe that the means are so close, right, that it, that, it, uh, that it does not make sense to create two separate groups for them, you simply merge them. You merge them and then what you would do is you would actually create uh, create a new mean right after you merge them then you get a get a new mean and then uh, then your k will go down by one now because let's say two groups have been merged if more than right i mean if it so happens that right there are more groups right that are okay which tend to merge then you can actually merge them too now discard right discard what it means is uh, discard right uh, so discard discard a cluster if it has too few samples discard a cluster if if it has too few samples right so what this means is that right i mean you don't even want to kind of consider that consider consider that as a, as a, as, a, as an independent kind of a cluster let us say that i have a cluster that has very few samples as compared to the number of samples in other clusters now i'll simply remove this cluster okay from my from my entire grouping thing so it means that my k will come down to you know k my by by one. And what I would do is I would reassign whatever samples here, I would reassign them to the other clusters. Right? D divide the discarded cluster if there's too few samples and assign assign its samples to to other groups. To other groups. Again, of course, you know, use some kind of a similarity metric, a Euclid or something to and then assign it to other groups. Then I said that, right, you can merge, you can discard, you can also split. Now, what do you do? It splits a cluster. So what it means is, okay, now let me first write it down and then I'll explain. It splits a cluster, splits a, splits a cluster if the maximum eigenvalue, okay, so note this, okay, maximum. It's not like you're going to check all the eigenvalues. The maximum eigenvalue, value of Okay, maximum value of the corresponding covariance matrix of the corresponding covariance matrix matrix is larger than let's say tau one or uh, tau two. Okay, we use already tau one. So again, this will be a hyperparameter. So we need to fix this. So what does that mean, right? So merge is easy to understand, discard is easy to understand. What does it mean to split? And so it means that uh, means that right after after let's say some iterations, you're sitting here and then you suddenly find that right this guy has a variance that's very high. Now only the maximum eigenvalue, right? So if you go back to the way we did a PCA, right? At the time I drawn this diagram, right, where I said that. But it said that right when I mean, you could have I mean if you if you if you if you do a zero mean right if you make make uh, if you make your make all your data samples zero mean so they could lie on a cluster like they could lie on lie on a cluster right like that okay so a distribution like that right now you know that you know that right your 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 data samples are probably probably right situated like this. And then we say that the maximum variance in this direction, and then and then the and then the next maximum is occurring in an orthogonal direction, and so on, right? So you know each is an eigenvector. Now, what this means is that, right? If you find that it's spread along the maximum eigenvalue, right? That means uh, that means with respect to this eigenvector, with respect to this eigenvector, which uh, with, uh, which along which the maximum spread occurs, if the eigenvalue is higher than than a threshold, it says that you split this cluster. So how do you split? How will you split this cluster? So, so you split this cluster such that, so to split the cluster, what do you do? I mean, suppose I tell, suppose I take actually you know a data sample. Let me call this xi. Then compute, right? To check. Okay. So what do you do? Compute xi transpose. Let's say the highest eigenvector is ei. Okay. If xi transpose EI, that means, right, if you take the inner product, this is greater than zero, then XI, XI goes to class one, okay, goes to, goes to, let's say, one class, okay, else, 
okay, whatever, right? It means that if it is less than or equal to zero, that means right, you know, whether these points are lying lying on this side or or right on this side or right, whether these points are lying on this side. Right? Else, xi goes to goes to the goes to another class goes to another class. Right? So you're splitting this cluster now, right? By actually using the notion of maximum variance, the direction of maximum variance, and then and then right you are simply simply finding out which of these samples should go to which go to which go to well you know should should go to what class so now you can think about this right so so you have a situation like this right where you have some groups there some groups here so you got like well, maybe right now you know you could have you could have more than k less than k already and then if you look at look at uh, look at this guy right this seems to have a higher variance Right, as we as computed, and therefore it, we feel that we feel that right that these samples sitting inside inside uh, inside this cluster, they are not really all that close because of the fact that the variance is high. That means right this could be further split so that you can get two new new groups wherein the data sample sitting inside each one of them could would look much more close. So the idea is to split this right into half, and how to split this into half right is not is not immediately apparent. Right, how do you split the cluster, and therefore you split the cluster right in this manner. Okay, and then and then similar to k-means, right? I say okay, similar to k-means, you can uh, right. I mean, uh, so so you do the same thing, right? I mean, you kind of right, continue doing this until until the labels labels are unchanged. Then after that, you can again rerun it with another set of initialization, and then try to pick the label assignment that has a minimum error. But all this, of course, will require will require more uh, computations. But that is okay. At least at least you know this method gives you the flexibility to actually change k along the way. So typically, you start with a k that you that you think is a reasonable number, and then and then as the right as the as is, as the, you know iterations go on, k can k can decrease or increase depending upon what's happening inside your say, data set. Okay, this is called ISO data, and uh, this is very similar to k-means except that uh, you can trick a look upon it and look upon it as an extension of k-means, which addresses the issue of issue of lack of exact knowledge of k.